Yeah, I had known Ruth Cohn for many years. Uh, Wall Stevens is a really interesting person and a poet that I admire. So I was really excited to be part of the, the concept of this. I love being in group shows that I don't organize because it's like just being a grunt as opposed to the leader. And the poem itself um, has fascinated me, confused me, confounded me, made me laugh, made me cry. Um, so I was actually had broken my arm and was unable to make the meeting where the stanzas were chosen. And there was this little bit of horse trading that went on, I understand, but I basically got my name pulled out of a hat with the stanza. And it turned out to be a perfect stanza because it had a very, um, I spent a lot of time in the, in the East, in Japan, and so it had a very kind of haiku aspect to it. It was just two lines long and extremely um, evocative, emotionally as well as visually evocative. So um, I started doing a lot of work. The pieces on the board over there were the beginnings of This first line of the stanza is the blackbird whirled in the autumn winds. And so I started whirling things and making marks and whirling kind of ways. And then about, I don't know, four or five weeks into that, it hit me that you can't whirl from movement. You have to whirl from a stationary point. And once I got the idea that whirl begins with a stop, I was able to kind of develop forms that were more, uh, that, that to me, interpreted the stanza a little more directly and interestingly. And then the other thing that I wanted, the second line of the stanza is, um, it was a small part of the pantomime, which to me was um, very, very directly spoke to the idea that we're all on, in the show, that we're all part of this uh, show that we either we know it or we don't or we play along with it or we resist, resist it but they were all on stage we're all part of this pantomime and pantomime has a kind of comic aspect as well as a theatrical aspect to it so what i wanted my piece to be because it was about birds and because it had this theater connotation to me i wanted it to be light and airy and actually move like a curtain and so the only way i could think to do that would be to work on paper and I started doing a lot of work on paper, and I liked the, the lightness of it, but it was just, it didn't move like a curtain. It didn't have any substance to it. So I bought a bunch of Japanese paper that I really liked and started um, layering them together, adding different kinds of medium. And then I thought about wax. I thought there's a lot of people that have been working in wax, a lot of friends of mine, and I, I got given all kinds of wax, you know, here, try this, try that. And so a lot of people think that my paintings are actually encaustics, and they, they're not. They're actually made with joint compounds. So there's been this kind of crossover to wax in a way. And so I started waxing and using wax as kind of a skin and also kind of a glue. And the, it, it took on this, the presence that I had seen in my mind that I wanted the work to have. And so I do a drawing, I fix it with a medium, I do some more drawing, I do some more drawing, I do some scraping, then I wax both sides of the paper, and then I do some more drawing, and then a whole lot more scraping. And the final coat is usually some drawing and then maybe some waxing. And so that they have this curtain-like feel to them, but they also, when you touch them, they feel like skin. They feel like something that maybe once was alive. Uh, and then what I wanted to do was hang them in a way so that they were essentially suspended away from the wall so that whenever someone walked by or whenever there was a little bit of a breeze, there would be this kind of undulation that um, would be gentle, wouldn't be a whirling kind of a feeling, but it would, be, it would actually give the piece movement, literal movement. And that's, um, and that's my story. <laughs>